Hey, this is Dan Palinger with School of Sheets, and today I'm going to show you how you can populate dates based on status changes. In reality, you can populate dates based on really any change in a row of your sheet, but this particular use case, which is probably the most relevant, is that you're going to change a status and that's going to trigger a date reflecting when that status change was made. So I've set up a very simple, call it a tracking sheet. We have five tasks, each is a status, each is a responsible party, and there is a start and an end date. And these are gonna be reflecting the date that these tasks actually started and actually were completed. And that's based on a use case where the responsible person would come in here and they would update the status to indicate when they started it, when they finished it. We're gonna have red be at risk. We're not gonna actually use that, but it's pretty typical. Yellow means it's not started or it's on hold perhaps. Uh, what really matters, green is gonna be in progress, blue is gonna be completed. So there's probably, there's really two ways that you can set up this system. Normally I will show every way to accomplish some type of situation. In this case, I'm only gonna show you one way because it is by far and away the best way to do it in my opinion. We're gonna be able to use the built-in automation to really quickly accomplish this. The second method, which I had to use before they built this, Smartsheet actually just um, added this feature pretty recently. You basically have to set up automation to copy the rows to different sheets, then use a cross-sheet formula to reference the timestamp that sheet was made, match it to the unique identifier in this sheet, and record the date. That sounds like more work, you're right it is, so let's just do it the easy way. So to set this up, go to automation, record a date, for this one, let's record, spell it right, record start date. Trigger when rows are added or changed, this will work just fine. And our use case is the status is gonna be changed to green and that is going to record the date in the start date column. Pretty simple. Oh, it looks like I already made one. Now, I just have some old stuff here. We can basically just copy this for the end date and modify it a little bit. When we change to blue, we are gonna record the end date. And that's literally it. Look, it took two minutes. Now let's see it in action. Change that status to green. We can wait for a second here. Let Smartsheet do its thing in the background. There we go. Now let's say this one was started on the, let's just say the 11th. And now Joe, being the good guy he is, came in and finished this. There it is. Now there's maybe a potential kind of flaws this is currently set up, right? So if this now gets changed to green, every time a applicable change is made that triggers the automation, it will overwrite whatever date is currently in that field. So our start date is now going to get replaced, which depending on the workflow, it might make sense if you're, for example, kind of starting and stopping tasks, but that's not too typical. Now, let's say you want to prevent the overriding of dates that you already put in. So if we have a situation like this, that's actually, this is actually about to change, you're gonna see it. Or maybe this one was completed already. Perhaps this is kind of the situation of our Tashi as it is, and we don't want this information to change. Let's just set it up real quickly. Okay, let's make this the fifth. So we're gonna need to put a filter in place. So basically what we're gonna do is tell the system when the status is changed to blue, only when there is no date in the end date column should you record it. So we're end date. We're gonna say is not a date. You could technically use is blank. Um, 
I prefer to make any parameter associated with a column specific to that column type. We're using a date specific column, so I want to use this not a date. Therefore, some people will write text into dates, which sometimes makes sense. Most of the time, I think it doesn't. Um, but regardless, this will allow you could theoretically have text in your date column, and this will still work to override it. If you want to be able to put in text and not have it be changed with a date for whatever reason, maybe you have NAs, you can just use your filter condition to be um, is blank. Okay. So now we have these filters in place. So if I come in here, so same thing, change this to in progress and let's change this to completed. So now we're gonna see a couple of changes come in here. That one came in pretty quick. But now, for, so for these existing ones with our filters in place, there should be no change. So let's change both of these to green and these dates should really remain the same. While we're at it, let's complete these guys. Just get a bunch of get a bunch of data flowing in. So here we go. These two have populated. Neither of these have, just like we want. So we can complete them again. And that is how you populate a date based on the status change. This is how you use the recorded date automation. It's a pretty handy one. I'm a big fan of it. And hopefully you will enjoy it too. So thank you for watching this uh, brief video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If this was helpful, you can help us out by liking the video. It helps YouTube show it to more people. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more instructional videos on Smartsheet. And if you are new to Smartsheet, you can try it for 30 days for free with a link below. Um, it's a referral link, so we appreciate you using that. And if you are a Smartsheet user or you're interested in using Smartsheet but you need some help, we do offer professional consulting services. Um, we're Smartsheet certified. So you can reach out to us. There's a link to our website and have a conversation. There's no obligation if you want to get started and just see if we're a good fit to help you guys out. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.